Good evening again, everyone. Uh, to the students, no, sa BSREM, natin sa Philippine Christian University. Today, tonight, we are going to discuss this uh, very important topic, itong torrent system, no. Paano po ito nangyari at paano po ito uh, naging part sa system natin dito sa Pilipinas. Ano ba ang importance nitong torrent system or this title, no? Wherein na-adapt ito ng sa Pilipinas, no? So, tonight we are going to discuss more about uh, lectures up about the history of the uh, how it came over, no? So, with that, I'm going to start with this uh, story. Now, remember this guy this is uh, Magellan. In yes. March 1521, he discovered Philippines. Na 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 discover niya itong Pilipinas eh. Uh, actually he was looking for spices that time. Eh. Yun ang story in eh. uh, and he was traveling towards uh towards Spain that time na nadaanan niya itong Pilipinas. It was in uh, March 1521, no? And uh, take note that itong si Magellan is that baka akala nyo Spanyol ito siya. Hindi po ito siya Spanyol. Ito po siya is a Portuguese. No? He, is a, he was a Portuguese explorer. No? He was traveling towards Spain nung nadaanan niya ang ating Pilipinas. And when he saw it, he then uh, said and proclaimed that uh, okay, this... Uh, uh, land, this whole island is under the crown of Spain. Yan ang sabi niya. And the king of Spain the time was uh, King Philip II. Okay. So, yun sabi niya, this, claim niya na this is now owned by the crown of Spain, itong, itong isla natin. And later on, uh, it was known to them and called by them as Las Islas Filipinas no. Uh, later on si Roy Villalobos, siya talaga ang nag-name niya no. Uh, but actually he named it the Bajelan before that named it under the crown of Spain no. King Philip no. And Philip Filipinas, Philip ayan. So Las Philip Las Filipinas ang natawag niya no. It was in honor of the crown of Spain that time. All right. So Yan ang ating lecture. Take note, Portuguese po ito si Magellan. Na kaya may kanta nga si William Minito, yung March 15, 21, di ba? Uh, so, yan po, no? And we know for a fact what happened after that when they tried to introduce and went to the Philippines and introduced Christianity sa ating lugar. Eh, halos yung ibang mga sila, Haring Humabon and everything, uh, they accepted Christianity. But uh, actually, si Lapu-Lapu, uh, who was the one who killed Magellan, the famous Battle of Mactan occurred. Yeah, no? Now, um, remember that in this Battle of Mactan, si Lapu-Lapu is, ayaw niya magpa-convert, no? Saying na, why should I do that? Na, uh, we don't believe in that, no? And siyempre, na-touch ang ego ng mga Espanyol Magellan. So, okay, we will uh, try to show you how uh, how we will uh, defeat you. Actually, uh, ang story na nabasa ko niya noon sa history, no? I may be wrong, pero uh, just imagine in this picture natin that uh, the Spaniards, kompleto sila ng tinamong sword nila, uh, bakal. Tapos ang atin sibat na kahoy and meron pa silang guard, no? yung bakal na, na cover, parang Kevlar nila. And we were able to defeat them. Now, if you will notice on the, on the picture, ang layo-layo ng kanilang, uh, ang layo-layo ng kanilang bangka. No? Anang, not the bangka, the ship, no? the ship, the galleon. Ang layo-layo ng galleon, which carries all the the cannons no which could is which which could have easily 
uh, destroyed and wiped out this uh, uh, grupo ni Lapu-Lapu. Pero uh, it did not happen, no? Well, the story goes that they decided to attack during dawn. Yun ang sabi nung sa mga historians, itong mga Spanyol. So, atakihin natin itong kampo ni Lapu-Lapu by dawn. And tamaktan yun. And then, ang hindi nila naalam when they tried to attack was that it was actually low tide that time. Low tide. So, hindi maka diretso ang, ang galyon doon sa pinaka malapit na baybayin. So, it has to stay doon sa malalim na portion for which yung mga kanyo nila hindi makaabot ang buga ng fire. No? Hindi makaabot yung mga bala ng kanyo nila. And so, they have to uh, get a small boat then go down knee deep eh yun doon sila tinalo ni Lapu-Lapu because they, it was so heavy no sabi ng mga historians na napanood ko it was so heavy ta yung mga armor ng ng Spanyol kaya ito naman si Lapu-Lapu kita nyo ang grupo niya walang mga damit ng itong mga, mga kasamahan niya edi wala ano it was a sitting duck no uh, basically si ang grupo ng mga Spanyol was sitting duck and they were all slaughtered. No? It was the first defeat encountered by uh, the Spaniards. And history will tell us that by reason of that, ba, biglang nilusob na ngayon ng karami-raming mga sundal, ah, mga kawal ang, ng Spanyol ang Pilipinas at talagang they colonized at they occupied us. No? Siyempre, nakarating ang report na wipe out sila. So, ano bang mga meron dito na mga sa lugar niyan sa Las Islas, Filipinas na they claim as their own. Now, uh, you would uh, you would know or I do not know if you know that um, the the colonization of Spain sa ating uh, sa ating bansa na Pilipinas umabot ng from 1521 up to 1898 that is actually more than 300 years imagine that for more than 300 years we were colonized by the Spaniards kaya po wag po kayo magtaka kung karamihan po sa inyo matatangos ang ilong yeah oh yung hotdog o sige Jong so <laughs> <laughs> okay, malitangos ang ilong, makikinis tayo, mga ganda itsura. If you will notice, somewhere in Oriental Banda, maraming uh, maraming mapuputi, parang mga Spanyol sa dyan sa may uh, Zambuanga. Yan, maraming mga Spanyol. Kasi yung mga areas niyan, yun ang mga na-occupy talaga ng, ng Spain noon. At saka nagkaroon, siyempre, ng uh, relationship between uh, our natives and as well as the um, as natives as well as the Spaniards. No? For 300 years ba naman, di ba? Imagine that. So, having said that, we will now proceed with this um, story, no? And ito si Sir Richard Robert Torrens. Oh, let's discuss now the Torrens system, no? Uh, paano it came about, no? Um, ang layo, no? From the story nung, nung Spain colonization na 300 years, diretso muna tayo kay Sir Richard Robert Torrens, born on May 31, 1812, up to August 31, 1884, the time of his death. Now, this guy is actually a Irish-born parliamentarian, writer, land reformer, originator of the system of land registration, and which is called the Torrens system, system of land registration. Yan ang ano niya. Now, actually, ito si Sir Richard Robert Torrens, commissioner ito ng custom. May custom sa South Australia eh. Australia nito eh. Um, during the time na customs commissioner siya. Parang imagine a collector of customs or commissioner of customs in Pilipinas. He was inspired by the comparative facility with ships. Yung mga barko, no? They're in 
paano nag-negotiate no? and transferred from one merchant to another yung goods ba? Yung mga shares doon, paano na to transfer? And he was thinking na parang pa, maganda ito ha. And by that, uh, later on, he became a register of deeds. He, de he devised a scheme no? of registration of title na nag-improve sa old system of registration of deeds. No? So that when he became a member of the First Colonial Ministry of the Province of South Australia, he introduced niya sa Parliament a bill providing for the adoption of his scheme of land registration. Kaya nga, in 1858, no, the measure was passed and came to be known as the Torrens System. Galing sa pilyedo niya ni Sir Richard Robert Torrens, no? At tiyatawag nating uh, Torrens System. Okay, now, having said that, we'll go back to the history of this, no? Okay. Now, first is that um, magbibigay nga pala ako sa inyo ng konting a uh, video on this uh, Sir Richard Torrance. No? I will uh, give this to you and I will like you to watch and listen to this. Okay. For a while. Robert Richard Torrance was the son of one of the founding fathers of the colony of South Australia, Colonel Robert Torrance. He was responsible for the introduction and early implementation of the Torrance title system of land registration still used in many parts of the world. Robert Richard Torrance was educated at Trinity College in his native Dublin, where he graduated with a Masters of Art. He then went to London where he was trained as the Collector of Customs for the colony of South Australia. On taking up the post of collector, Torrance soon became known for his violent Sir, mahina audio, sir. Once he angrily seized a French whaling ship, the build the border. Okay, okay. This high handed action okay. caused a great disturbance and ultimately cost the British government four thousand pounds in compensation money. About sixty thousand dollars today. Torrance violently attacked the editor, George Stevenson, for lampooning him in his newspaper. This ended okay. in court cases, and Torrance had to pay heavily. However, Torrance's capacity to fight and to lead were to find an outlet in his efforts to solve the problems connected with the buying and selling of land. In 1852, Torrance was made the colonial treasurer and registrar general. As registrar general, he found the need to reform the system of land conveyancing acutely urgent. He had the idea of using the same method to transfer land as was used in the selling of ships. Here, a single document gave continuing proof of ownership. The 1857 elections were drawing near, and Torrance was standing for Parliament. He made land title reform the main electoral issue. When the results were announced to the citizens of Adelaide, Torrance headed the polls. And so, Robert Richard Torrance became a member of South Australia's first elected Parliament. Torrance first introduced his bill to reform land titles in May of 1857, and after much debate and opposition, it came to the final vote in December. The bill was passed by Parliament, and there was much rejoicing by the citizens of Adelaide. And so, on the 27th of January, 1858, the Real Property Act became law. Torrens returned to Dublin, and after went to England, where he was knighted for his lifelong work dedicated to reforming systems for the people. For these benefits, Australia and the world have much to thank Robert Richard Torrens. Right, so yun yung part, no? And what is this uh, torrent system all about? Is this one. The torrent's title is a certificate of title for an interest in land. On this single certificate, all transactions for the property land are registered. Transfers, mortgages, leases, and so on with this registration guaranteed correct by the state. The certificate of title was formally prepared in duplicate. One remained with the Registrar-General, while the owner kept the other. Since 1990, the Register of Certificates of Title has progressively been converted to a computerised record. The original certificate of title is held electronically, and a paper certificate of title is provided to the owner as evidence of ownership. 
Today at the Lands Title Office, a would-be buyer can check the title of a property. From computer searches and plans of the district, one can trace the land which is of interest. At a glance of the certificate, the particulars of a property are clear and the ownership certain, allowing the buyer to go ahead with complete confidence. Robert Richard Torrens is widely regarded as having conceived the idea of the Real Property Act. He first introduced his bill to amend land titles to the State Parliament in May of 1857. And after much debate and opposition, it came to the final vote in December. He then resigned his seat in Parliament to become the first Registrar General to administer the new Act. Robert Richard Torrens also helped the introduction of the Torrens title system to other Australian states and New Zealand. Since then, the principle of the Torrens title system of land registration has spread throughout the world. Torrens left Australia in 1862 and took his ideas to Ireland, his native country, and to England where he was knighted for his life's work. Prior to the Real Property Act, disputes over land ownership and boundaries were frequent and sometimes violent. Under the Torrens system, there are few disputes because all dealings are recorded on the certificate of title, which is guaranteed by the state. Over the years, methods have been modernised, but the principle remains the same. A single indisputable certificate of title recorded in the Lands Title Office and a paper version held by the owner. For these benefits, Australia and the world have much to thank Robert Richard Torrens. All right, so that's it. Okay, now, so with that, itong si Sir Richard Robert Torrens gave us so much, no? And mind you, I would like to tell you that there are many, many countries that are following this uh, torrent system, no? I'll just give you a an overview, no? Um, ito yung mga countries, no? Of course, Australia. Um, meron silang Australian property law and the Real Property Act of 1858, yun ngang ininak ni Sir Robert, Sir Robert uh, uh, Torrance, no? And in Canada, meron ding na-follow nila itong Torrance system, no? Uh, established in 1861, no? And in Fiji, the Torrance Statute in the Land Transfer Act of 1971. Sa Dominican Republic, in 1920, Recording in progress ginamit nila ang Torrens title system uh, uh, starting in 1920. In Ireland, i-start nila ang Torrens title system in 1892. No? In Israel, meron din to silang i-copy rin nila ang Torrens title system and continued no? since Israel's foundation in 1948. No? And in Malaysia, Adapted nila ang three version of the Torrent system. New Zealand and of course Philippines tayo. And even Russia adapted the Torrent system. No? Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Thailand and uh, some states in the United States. No? Mga US territory of Guam, Minnesota, Virginia, Massachusetts, Colorado, Georgia, Hawaii, New York, North Carolina, Ohio and Washington. So it only recording stopped. It only just uh, emphasized that indeed, ang torrent system is famous all over the world. No, in fact, ang ating land registration act, which is actually virtually identical don sa real property act of Massachusetts of 1898. Eh, alam mo naman tayo mga Pinoy, mga at yung mga system. So, with that, uh, kinapi natin yun. No? But nevertheless, ayun, maganda ang effect. No? So, let us now go to the history of these things. No? Alright, gaya ng sabi ko, uh, we were uh, colonized by Spain. no And actually, for 300 years na na-colonized tayo, maraming history nangyari dyan. Alam natin si Jose Rizal, si Bonifacio, and everyone else fought no against the Spaniards even the Aguinaldo, si Gregorio del Pilar, mga heroes natin no they fought continuously uh vigorously against the uh Spanish dominion and actually uh, we were losing <laughs> hindi talaga natin kaya no kasi because of their with their cannons, guns, yung kanilang armors and everything at saka dami nila talaga 
So, and actually, uh, we were helped by the Americans to fight against the Spaniards. And it was in the uh, part of uh, uh, 1897 to 1898. No? Pero it was just a very short war na kasama ang Americans and Filipinos against the Spaniards. No? Mailit lang. It, ang, ang nabasa ko is that it's about six months lang yung gera nila. No? And imagine, yung Spanish colonial period natin began when yung explorer, yung Portuguese na si Ferdinand Magellan uh, came to the islands in 1521 and claimed the colony for the Spanish Empire. And the period lasted lasted until the Philippine Revolution in 1898. Yung Philippine Revolution with the Americans. But unknowingly, uh, happy masyado nun si Aguinaldo, no? but unknowingly, uh, there was this secret meeting ang mga Spanyol at saka ang United States. No? This was done in Paris. No? Nagkaroon ng Treaty of Paris in 1898, specifically on October 1, 1898. So, nag-usap yung mga Spanyol na mga diplomats as well as the American diplomats there that aside from the Philippine territory, yung Guam, no? pinag-usapan nila, yung Cuba, kung, kasi yung Guam and Cuba was under also the occupation of Spain at that time. No? And gusto ko ni ng, ng US. No? And na-include din ang issue on uh, the Philippines. Now, actually, ang um, issue with respect to the Philippines was more on the possession of the uh, Americans. And kasi vigorous masyado yung campaign noong unang time wherein ang sinasabi is that dapat hindi daw pakialaman ang ang mga yung ano natin, yung ating parang uh, independence natin. No? So with that, uh, napag-usapan ng Spanish Spain at saka US, o sige, i-turn over na ang possession ng Pilipinas sa amin, sa Amerika, at alam mo kung magkano ang binayad during that time, in 1898, kung how much ang value ng Pilipinas, and it is $20 million. Yan. So, binili tayo because of that Treaty of Paris from Spain, the ceded Philippines to the United States. Now, so, ang America that time, nandiyan na tayo, no? awak na America. And we know for a fact na uh, when um, we were given this independence, no? alam ng karamihan ng ating mga Pinoy na it's not a total independence kasi nandiyan pa rin yung mga Amerikano. Eh. Nakikialam pa rin sila. So, the revolution again started with General Emilio Aguinaldo. No? Continue naman siya, nakikipaglaban. Although, alam natin sa history na nahuli rin siya at pina pledge siya for allegiance and loyalty na America no and to say na stop na tayo kasi eh, tapos na itong ating uh, independence no uh, we have this independence now but that is the, the story no but the story is that uh, we were still actually under the uh, under the para supervision or uh, hawak tayo ng US na America pa rin, no? And, in fact, uh, in 19, uh, the U.S. created a Philippine Commission. Para, kasi, ang unang Philippine Commission na ginawa nila, itong kay, ano, itong kay Sherman Commission, no? Headed by Dr. Jacob Sherman. Siya yung president ng Cornell University. And mind you guys, ang Cornell University ang one of the best university in the world until now. Kung baga, ang kabangga niyan, Harvard, ang kabangga niyan, MIT, yan ang mga, ano yan sila, Cornell University is one of the best schools in the, uh, all, uh, in the whole world. No? Now, they created this Philippine Recording Commission called the Sherman Commission. Ang trabaho ng Sherman Commission that time was to investigate and observe on whether or not ang Pilipinas ba eh pwede na magkaroon ng sariling independence. And actually, they they decided, the commission said na, no, 
hindi pa ready ang Pilipinas for total um, total independence kasi uh, hindi pa nila kaya. We have to help them because ang sistema nila, wala silang sistema. Maraming walang sistema. Yung um, judicial system, legislative system, lahat ng mga mga sistema. Kasi nga, imagine ha, for 300 years, ang system na pinapalo natin, yung sistema nung nag-colonize sa atin ng mga Spaniards. And their system, they were never introduced to us, but they, it was held by them. Recording stopped. It was held by them, and they literally, actually, uh, govern us. No? Ngayon, ang gusto ng Amerika is tayo magkaroon ng governance. So, they wanted to help us. So, they established this Philippine Commission, the first commission, uh, German commission was only to observe, uh, is only to to look on whether or not kaya ba natin hindi. And after finding na hindi pa nga natin kaya, they form another commission and that is the Taft Commission, no? headed by William Howard Taft. Ayan. During that time, siya na ang head ng Philippine Commission. And the law that was enacted in relation, daming ginawang mga batas, no? Uh, yung legislative, uh, pati yung mga other functions ng system of the government para magtakbo talaga ang Pilipinas. But we are not interested in that. We are interested on the land registration. Okay. So in relation to the land registration, ang first nila na ginawa na batas is itong... Um, On November 6, 1902, okay, ang first nilang ginawa is itong Land Registration Act. No? And it uh, actually took effect on February 1, 1903. Yan, no? uh, this um, Philippine Commission, if you'll notice, mga Amerikano yan siya. No? Um, this Philippine Commission is actually designed temporary lang. Uh, to provide for the administration of the affairs of the civil government no ng ating Philippine Islands and uh, for other purposes no um, because yun nga um, hindi pa tayo ready and in fact remember itong dalawang commission na inappoint imagine up a president of the United States ang nag-appoint nito okay now ang president noon si William McKinley ah ayan okay Now, ang trabaho nitong second commission, yung tough commission, kasi yung Sherman, as I said, investigative and observatory lang muna sila noong that time. Ito second Philippine commission, itong tough commission, appointed pa rin ito ng president now to exercise legislative and limited executive powers in the Philippines. No? And then, uh, it was appointed si tough ni President uh, McKinley. So, the Land Registration Act was patterned after the uh, Torrance system nga, ni Sir Richard Robert Torrance. So, do not forget that. Okay? And ang um, sistema na ito ng Land Registration noong 1902, tagal na masyado, no? Grabe. Just imagine, wala pang cellphone, wala pang... Eh ko may type ah may typewriter pero wala pang computer. Kaya hirap daw no? paano pa? manual. So but now uh, meron silang tinatag na Court of Land Registration. Okay. And then may offices of the Registry of Deeds na silang ginawa. Imagine na 1902 tagal na niyan. And then nag-institute sila nga nung Torrance System of Land Registration ni Sir Richard Robert Torrance. Nagkopya lang tayo. And then after that ang sinasabi dito sa Land Registration Act, yung real estate ownership may be judicially confirmed and recorded in the archives. Take note, judicially confirmed and recorded in the archives, ibig sabihin, it is a court proceeding pa noon. So, wala pang, technically speaking, before ka magkaroon ng, ng, ng titulo, ng lupa, kailangan through a judicial hearing. Kasi ang nakita ng mga problems siguro noong mga panahon na yun is that uh, all, all Filipinos who, who think that they, we had already this independence, ah, turo, 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 akin tong lupa, akin ang lupa. Walang, wala talagang boundaries on how to, to know kung kan, ganun ba kalaki talaga ang kanilang, ano, ang kanilang pagmamayari. No? Minsan, kaya nga sabi nga doon sa video na napanood nyo, it became violent 
up to the point of uh, magpapatayan talaga yung mga nag-aagawa na akin ito, akin ito. Wala siyang proof. Sabi niya, ako nagtanim ng mangga na yan. Ako nagtanim ng century na, na puno na yan. Ganun lang ba? Parang hindi masyado klaro. So with this system, na klaro, but it is through a judicial system. no And ang um, real estate ownership now, makonfirm na siya. Okay. Confirmation pa lang ha. And recording. And then, um, may, may inappoint na limang judges for that uh, Court of Land Registration appointed by the Governor General at the time. And may isang judge of the court na head siya and meron siyang apat na associate justices. Oh, parang Supreme Court din ba? No? So yan ang maghihiring ngayon for the confirmation and uh, decision to record it in the archives yung uh, evidence of ownership mo nun para may pagmamayari ka sa lupa. So, yun ang time na yun, no? And then, after that, in uh, February 11, 1913, ito, napasa yung Cadastral Law Act, no? Yung Act number 2259, yan. Nagkaroon ng compulsory registration of uh, land titles with private ownership. Yan. Registration of titles was still judicial in nature. Now, remember niyo yung mga cadastral survey, cadastral registration. It is a government uh, initiated survey uh, wherein everyone na 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 abot ng survey ng government is will be appoint will be documented and the government files now a case in court to have this title and they will be named as respondents no whether or not you are really the the occupant of that property maghihiring yan sa korte paghihiring yan sa korte sabi ng court okay you submit requirements and everything at mabibigyan ka ng ng title yan yung judicial uh, judicial proceedings on the issuance of uh, the title no kaya Uh, merong court of uh, merong cadastral registration court ah meron yan it is the regional trial court no so merong case number mabibigyan kanyan if of course kasi the government sees it na yung iba kasi yung mga tao hindi naman talaga sila voluntarily na magpunta sa registry of deeds para or mag-apply doon sa government sa DNR para uh, magkaroon ng titulo no so it is a compulsory no registration of land titles that start in 1913 in fact um until mga 1920s 30s 40s nagkatuluyan pa rin ang uh, cadastral registration okay so it was judicial in nature and then the court of land registration exercised jurisdiction over all applicants no for the registration of titles to land or building in the Philippines with the power to hear and determine all questions arising upon such application. So, yun. Hearing sila, ganyan. Parang, uh, nangyayari pa rin yan, uh, the same system na gina-adapt ng ating uh, cadastral court ngayon, ng regional trial court. Kasi hanggang ngayon, pwede pa man tayo maglapit sa court. No? Save pa rin. It's through judicial proceedings. And then, after nyan, nagkaroon ng Act Number 2374, it's a new law again, wherein the jurisdiction was transferred to the Court of First Instance na ang pangalan niyan ngayon is Regional Trial Court. Ayan, yan, ang new, yan ang name niya ngayon, Regional Trial Court. No? That it, Court of First Instance. And the creation, uh, it's still judicial, ah, uh, RTC, and the creation of the General Land Registration Office, GLRO. Meron kayo nakita na titulo na GLRO? Yun pa yung mga, mga issuances under this General Land Registration Office. Kaya sa title makita nyo, GLRO number one, ang ganun, yan siya. It was created to look into the effective implementation of land registration law and the registry of deeds no? created by the Land Registration Acts were placed under its administrative supervision. Okay. So, sila ang nagbantay niyan. And this time, uh, meron ng uh, work ang Registry of Deeds na marami. Kasi, uh, after this uh, uh, 
uh, hearing ng mga judges were in courts were uh, directing the issuance of titles, marami ng mga transactions na nangyayari. So, registry of deeds were functioning already there, no? Pero, wala pang administrative titling. Still, judicial pa lang. Ang trabaho lang nila noon is they started now, uh, from then, marami ng mga transactions. Nagre-record na sila kung anong nangyayari doon sa under the system of uh, Torrance uh, title, no? Alright. So, And then, in uh, June 17, 1954, mal mataas ang agwat, no? Nagkaroon ng batas, Republic Act Number no. 1151, okay? And this time, gi-abolish ang GLRO, ang General Land Registration Office, and created the Land Registration Commission under the Department of Justice. Okay. Take note, by these times, meron na tayong full independence talaga. May gumagalaw. Okay, itong Republic Act ito, meron na tayong uh, upper house and lower house. Created na talaga ito. Purely Pilipinos na ito. Wala na masyadong, wala na napakialam ang mga Amerikano. Now, that is the reason why if, uh, before I will proceed, that is the reason why in 1913 when there was this cadastral act and Maraming mga lupa still under Spanish title. They were required to have it uh, entered in the torrent system. Tapos yung mga titles under American, US uh, titles, they were also required to be placed under the torrent system. No? And kaya meron pa tayong mga titulo ng mga luma. Ang problema, kapag hindi nyo yan na, na pa... na pa pasok sa torrent system mawawala yan magiging considered as a uh, parang alienable and disposable land and pwede na apply yan ngayon kung sino man ang makapag-apply kaya marami dito lalo na sa Davao City meron pang mga Spanish titles but now it has different uh, title under the name of another person and they are saying na land grabbing daw pero the point is that uh, they should have Those old titles that they have, those Spanish titles na given to them or the American titles given to them, they should have placed it under the torrent system of uh, natin para sana ma-register. Pero hindi lang nagawa. Now, I think, in, not sure kung how long ang period given sa kanila, which we will come out uh, come to that later on during the next uh, uh, lectures natin. But, but if you will... understand, ngayon nga ni, mahina magbigay ng dissemination campaign ang government natin when there is a law that's being passed or directive to be done. How about noong unang panahon? How would the people here in Mindanao <laughs> na minimerong Spanish title na required pala under that law na iparegister mo dun sa torrent system para hindi mawala sa'yo? ba? Diba? So, I think yun ang number one problem, no? So, yeah. Uh, yung proper dissemination and knowledge of the existence of these directives and laws, no? So, uh, the creation of this uh, Land Registration Commission, I'll continue, the, under the Department of Justice, and a registry of deeds, ito na maganda, was established for every city and province. Kasi noon, isa lang registry of deeds. Then, in 1954, nagkaroon na ng karamihan, lahat ng city, provinces, nagkaroon na ng registry of deeds. No? And mga branch registry, charged with the function of registering deeds under the Torrance system ni Sir Richard Torrance. And with that, ang dami-dami ng registry of deeds, hindi lang... isa concentrated on one but in the whole city kaya meron tayo sa Davao City, Mandawe, Cebu, Manila, Pasig, lahat meron na yan, no? So, yeah, yun ang evolution ng ating ang ating land registration system until then in February 9, 1981 panahon pa ito ni uh, Ferdinand Marcos yes sir Uh, naipasa yung executive order number 649 
and reorganize the LRC into the National Land Titles and Deeds Administration, NLTDRA. No? And with that, na-change na lang naman ang pangalan, pero ang function hindi naman uh, nag-iba. Uh, it, it still implemented the laws governing the Torrance System of Land Registration in the Philippines. And you know, for a fact, after the revo EDSA Revolution, pagka September 30, 1998, palitan ka agad ang pangalan. Through a memorandum circular executed by the President, and it is now called the Land Registration Authority. Authority. Ayan na. So, 1988 po. So, the LRA continues to implement the laws governing the torrent system of land registration in the Philippines. So, so basically, yun po ang history. Alright? So, with that, um, before I will discuss to you the torrent system principle, no, and I would like to you to understand first itong regalian doctrine. Kasi baka malawabas ito sir Bong sa exam eh. Yung, oh, regalian doctrine simply states that all uh, properties of public domain belongs to the state, no? If it is not of private ownership. Kaya nga, uh, the state must declare a, par a parcel of, of or, or a land or track of lands to be alienable and disposable para ma-alienate at ma-transfer sa mga, uh, mga tao. Now, if there is no declaration that an area is alienable and disposable and it's still public land, public domain, it is automatically owned by the state. Klaro po yan. Yan po yung regalian doctrine. In fact, just to let you understand na suppose you have a land under your name and then titled under your name under the torrent system and then Suddenly, you died. Sa kamalas-malasan, wala kang heir. Wala kang descendants, wala kang ascendants, wala kang collateral barredatives, wala kang adapted, wala. Kahit na, kahit na kasin sa patay na kuko, wala. <laughs> wala. Wala talaga. Ang hirap talaga, sir. Wala talaga. No? So, um, the, the state may get back the property through what we call Escheat proceedings. Spelling po E S C H E A T. Escheat proceedings. Oh, escheat proceedings. No. So the government files a case, what we call escheat proceedings, and gets back the property, saying na wala nang heirs, balik revert back sa amin because under the principle of the Regalian doctrine, that all lands uh, without ownership are owned by the state. Yan. Alam mo, mayroong kaming case dito sa Davao City noon, matagal, nag-discuss sa aming teacher namin, wherein, there's a very good track of land here in Davao City na wala talagang air. Uh, Chinese yun eh. Tapos, um, and the, the government initiated what we call street proceedings to get back the title, not the property. And there is one guy who stood up and said, opposed, no, I am a descendant of this ano of this deceased na titled owner. Malayo na masyado ako. Eh noong unang panahon, wala pang DNA. At kahit na may DNA man, alang nga namang mahukay yung bangkay no, tas kunan siguro pwede. But what I'm trying to say during that time yung controversy nin, wala nang DNA. So he has to prove now his filiation, yung relationship niya with the guy. So, kailangan gumawa siya ng family tree. He was able to present a family tree in court wherein na-establish doon na yung parents niya from Milan, China, uh, anak nito nung, yung great-grandfather, Milan, China, tapos dumating dito, ganun. Ganun, yung, 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 yung story ba? Now, hindi believable. However, that guy who is a Chinese-Filipino went to China. Then sabi niya, your honor, mag muna tayo, mag, mag resetting muna tayo, punta ko China. Baka meron ako makuha ang ebidensya doon. Pumunta sa China, yung pala sa mga Chinese tradition pala, Sir Bong, kapag meron kang, meron pa rin silang ginagawang, sa kanilang monument doon, doon sa kanilang parang cemetery, 
meron pa rin silang family tree na ginagawa doon. Chinese character, Sir Bong ba? Yung sa, oh, kung saan yung lineage mo and everything, tapos ganun, na-establish ka doon. Ay, kinunan niya ng picture, tapos translation and everything. Doon na-trace po talaga na ito yung lineage niya. Nakasama siya. Yes, nakasama siya. So, with that, he was able to prove and the government uh, uh, was not able to take back the property. So, yung gina- yung, what I'm trying to explain class is that ang regalian doctrine natin, basta walang private ownership po, automatic po yan sa state. Yeah, owned, okay. by, um, uh, owned by the state. Okay? So, yan ang tandaan. In fact, yung mga, yung mga, ano, yung mga isda sa dagat natin, uh, it's owned by the state. Kung, kung hulihin man natin, okay lang. The moment we get it and we sell it, then let's own our private ownership. Kaya nga, meron tayong mga kaya tayo i-restrict ng government or ng state to say, mm-hmm. okay, you only use this a net, no? Na ganito lang mm-hmm. kalalaki para pag makakuha kayo ng maliliit, baka lubas pa, di ba? Kaya mga ganyan ba? Alright? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sige. And then, uh, let's proceed, no? Now, itong Torrance title, no? Kasi baka isipin nyo ang Torrance title is yung titulo. Magkakamali tayo dyan. Ang Torrance title... Ang ibig sabihin niyan, sistema. Ah, okay, sistema. So, uh, ito ay defined no, as a uh, land registration and land transfer system. Yan, Torrance title. no, Land registration and i-register daw and land transfer system. From transfer to 1, 2, 3, kung maglipat-lipat. Kaya nga, meron tayong original certificate of title kapag nalipat na, it's transfer certificate of title, transfer certificate of title, blah, 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 ganon. So, it is a land registration and land transfer system oh, in which a state creates and maintains a register of land holdings, which serves as the conclusive evidence of title of the person recorded on the register as the proprietor or owner and of all other interests recorded on the register. So, yan siya, yung titulo. Which is, sabi ng uh, definition, it is a conclusive evidence of title na ikaw yung may-ari ng lupa na yan. Kasi noon, wala eh. Pag sinabing, that's mine, hindi, that's mine, ay magpapatayan na. Ngayon, that's mine, ano ebidensya mo? Oh, may titulo ako. May technical description. Gusto mo magparelocation survey ka? O sige, tingnan natin ang boundary. Baka may encroachments o hindi. Kaya meron natin yung system ngayon. Madetermine na natin ang boundary, kung saan ang exact location, etc. No? Now, I would like to emphasize that you have to distinguish that. Uh, you, have, you should not confuse it with a tax declaration. No? Kasi itong mga tax declaration po, these are not evidences of ownership. Okay? Ang title po ang pinaka the best and conclusive evidence of ownership, no? Itong certificate of title okay. under the, under the Torrance title system, no? And Okay. Yung Okay. Tiyadale. Okay. Now, itong tax declaration it's not an evidence of ownership, but it is just a proof that you are paying the real property tax. However, in several cases decided by the Supreme Court, sabi ng Supreme Court that it is a good indication of uh, possession and proof that you are claiming the property as yours. A clear indication that you are claiming the property as yours and coupled with possession, it may ripen to ownership. Meaning to say, it may ripen for you to the right to apply for a title under your name. Okay. So, kung nakikita nagbabayad ka ng real property tax tapos ikaw ang in possession, eh, malaking ebidensya yun or in- indication na ikaw nga ang may-ari. Kaya, mag-apply ka na ng title para mabigyan ka ng conclusive evidence of title which is the transfer uh, the certificate of title under the Torrance title system. Yan ang difference. Ha? So take note kung tanungin po sa board exam is tax declaration a conclusive evidence of ownership. No kagad ang answer natin yan. Now pag tinanong naman is it a good indication that uh, you may have 
uh, sort of semblance of ownership, yes, pede. Oh, it is a indication. Pero hindi conclusive, ha? Huh? So, take note of that. Alright? And then, let us proceed. Okay. Now, the Torian systems work on three principles. Ito yung sabi ning, ito yung principle ni Sir Richard Robert Torrance. Simple lang masyado. Number one principle is yung mirror principle. Sabi niya dito, the register reflects mirrors accurately and completely the current facts about title to each registered lot. This means that each dealing affecting a lot, katulad ng transfer of title, mortgage, or discharge with the same, must be entered on the register and can be viewable by anyone. Kaya nga, remember, meron tayong title na nasa bolt ng ROD. It is what we call the original copy and the or duplicate originals copy. Now, the mirror principle na in-apply natin sa Pilipinas is that ang ka-mirror ng duplicate original owner's copy na tangan-tangan natin, itong original copy na nasa bolt ng ROD. So, kung ano ang dapat nakatatak doon sa duplicate original, yun din ang nakatatak sa original copy ng ROD. Kambal yan sila. Now, Sino ang mananaig sa kadalawa? Ang original o yung duplicate? Ang mananaig yung original copy. Because it the duplicate original owner's copy only mirrors the original. Kung may instances na may na-annotate sa original copy na hindi na-annotate sa duplicate original owner's copy na hindi mo alam. So the moment you get a certified true copy, dyan mo nalang nalaman na meron palang annotation. Okay? Because not all old times is masurrender naman si duplicate original owner's copy sa ROD na matatak kung anong natatak sa, sa original copy except kung merong transfer, voluntary transfer. In most cases, ang natatak sa original copy na hindi natatak sa duplicate original are actually involuntary dealings no? which uh, we will be discussing in our later lectures. Alright? And then, another principle is that itong curtain principle. Uh, one does not need to go behind the certificate of title as it contains all the information about the title. No? This means that ownership need not be proven by long, complicated documents that are kept by the owner. Hindi ka lang, oh, may deed of sale ako, meron akong extrajudicial settlement with sale or donation sa mga ninuno pa, linking documents para pakita ako ang may-ari. Hindi na. Pakita mo na yung titulo. That's it. And ang ROD, Siya na ang bahala ang mag-keep noong mga uh, linking documents from the beginning up to the end. Yun ang mga trace, kaya makahingi tayo ng traceback documents. And that is one of the functions of LRA to issue traceback documents. Yan. So, sila na yung bahala noon. Tayo, tayo lang tayo. Enough na tayo. Wala na yun. So, all of the necessary information regarding ownership is on the certificate of title. In fact, gaya na sabi ko sa inyo, Pag mayroong nakatatak doon na, let's say, for example, uh, may lease pendants, may kaso, um, yung nakatatak doon, it operates as a notice to the whole world that there is a pending case. So, importante na yung original copy ang titingnan natin. And how do we see the original copy that can be viewed by anyone is to get a certified true copy. No? So, Uh, yung rule na one does not need to go behind the certificate of title as it contains all the information about the title is not necessarily yung duplicate original owner's copy na pinapakita sa inyo. Pag pinakita sa inyo, ba, okay na ito, title ito. Malinis, bilhin ko na. No, you have to see the original copy because the duplicate is only the mirror of the original copy. And there are instances nga, like this one, na natatak ang list pendants na hindi natatak sa iyo. Ano ibig sabihin ng list pendants? May pending case pala. Ba, may kaso pala ito. Title ko. Ba't di ko alam? Eh, may kaso ka. Hindi ka pa siguro nakatanggap ng summons kaya hindi ka pa nakakapagsagot. So, yung buyer will no longer proceed with the sale transaction because he was warned that there was already a list pendants notice. It is a notice to him by looking at it na may annotation pala doon. Kaya nga, Uh, by not checking the original copy through a certified true copy, no? 
by not securing a certified true copy. You did not conduct due diligence. And therefore, when you buy the property, it is subject to the anything that is attached therein. Hindi ka makakomplain later on. Hindi ko man alam. Why? Because the rule is, it is a notice to the whole world. Okay? Klaro. Ibig sabihin, nakatatak dyan, yan na yan. Uh, kung hindi mo na tingnan, ay, hindi ka nag-exercise ng due diligence. Hindi naman in bad faith ka, tanga ka lang. Yun ang ibig sabihin. No? Alright. And then, the third principle is that ito. Indemnity principle provides for compensation of loss caused by private fraud or by errors made by the register of deeds. Dito parang hindi nag-work itong principle na ito sa atin dito sa Pilipinas. Hmm, bakit? Bakit kapag nawala ang ang original ang ang original copy of the title at hindi siya doon sa yung 50% yung discussion natin tsaka yung at least 50% and not at least more than 500 na baha sunog in everything yung sila ang nakawala sila Bakit tayong magasto? Eh, ang indemnity principle says provides for compensation of loss caused by private fraud or the tinago or by errors made by register of titles. Bakit pag may mga errors sa titles as to the kulang ng numbers ng technical description, hindi naman ma-insertan. Kailangan magpunta tayo sa court. And bakit tayong magastos nun? Error man nila yon Pag-type nila. Yeah, what I'm saying is that um, makilala nating congressman, sinasabi ko nga na, bakit hindi nyo tingnan yan? Uh, bakit tayo pahirapan? How about you apply the indemnity principle? Pag-asusin natin yung nagkamali. Or kung hindi, at least through administrative correction lang naman. Basta klaro, eh, nag-evolve na nga tayo pagdating sa mga certificate of libert, di ba? Even sex ngayon na mali, let's say male ka, tapos female ang nakalagay, Basta ma-prove mo na mail ka talaga, you don't need to go to court. Punta ka na doon sa uh, local civil register. Yung mga error in the first name, okay na yon. Dapat ganyan din tayo dito pagdating sa registry. This was yung mga minute error na can be corrected no? na without us incurring so much uh, expense. No? Imagine going to court, pinaka-minimum na babayaran mo yan, about 40 to 50,000 acceptance fee na abogado. Diba? So, ala, yung laki-laki nga eh. Kaya nga, yun ang sabi ko, Sir Bong, na uh, maybe we could find a way to, you know, to to correct this, uh, these things, no? Uh, hindi kasi na pagtutuon ng pansin masyado rin siguro ng mga lawmakers natin because lawmakers, uh, oh, wala kasing lobby eh. Dapat ilobby talaga ito siya. Anyway, um, yun, yun, yun yung tinatawag natin attorney cloud in the title. Yes, o oh, mga ganyan. Yung, yung maliit na error, yung spelling ng pangalan mo, no? imbis na E naging I, yung Maria or naging MA, cloud in the title. Lamalabas po sa exam yun. Cloud mm-hmm. in the title. Alright. Oh. Alright, sige. And then, Um, ito ang uh, final thing is uh, the Supreme Court in the case of uh, Consuelo de Garda versus N.M. Salibay Government Record Number L-8936 October 2, 1915 So it is a 1915 case no? uh, Kaka-epekto pa lang ng Land Registration Act natin and ang torrent system natin, nagkaroon ng controversy. So, ang justice doon, tingnan nyo, si Johnson is still a Supreme Court justice na, ah, it's a Supreme Court justice na Amerikano. And bank, no? And bank means all the justices decided the case and they voted more than the majority. And under the Philippine Constitution, there are 15, no? 14 associate justice and one Supreme Court justice no chief justice ah uh. All right ang sabi ng Supreme Court dito sa kaso ni Consuelo Legarda versus Salibi is that uh the whole that the real purpose do talaga ng torrent system of land registration is number one, to quiet title to land yun yung sabi ni Sir Bong no um there is a cloud in the title merong meron nag-aangkin 
Like say, for example, may nagpapakita na may deed of sale ako niya, hindi naman. Or meron nagsasabi na bininta ko yan, bininta na sa akin yan, hindi naman, na mas may title ka. You can go to court and file a case of what we call quieting of title. Para matahimik yung titulo mo. In the sense na may nanggugulo na mga papeles na nagsasabing sila ang may-ari, eh wala naman akong pinirmahan. Eh titulado man ito sa akin. And therefore, uh, I want to quiet my title by filing a quieting of title case in court. That is allowed, no? And yan ang purpose, no? Kapag meron kang titulo under the torrent system of land registration, itong mga titles natin, under sa torrent system, ano ito siya, yun is that meron kakarapatan magpatahimik sa mga nag-aangkin. Because conclusive evidence of ownership nga yung titulo. Walang dapat manggulo sa yun yan. Because that is your property. And the property is evidenced by a certificate of title. Okay? Now, with the juris expanded um, jurisdiction now of the courts, 400,000 above RTC and uh, below 400,000 assessed value ng property, municipal trial court na ang jurisdiction when it involves title to or possession of real property. No? Uh, just a dagdag kaalaman lang. And then, uh, yan daw ang first uh, real purpose. No? And second, to put a stop forever to any question of the legality of the title except those which are noted in the title itself. No? Para wala nang magtanong kung ang legal ba o hindi ang titulo na yan. It, that is a conclusive proof that it's mine. It's legal and binding. Pero kung may nakalagay doon na mga restrictions sa title, ano ba yung mga restrictions na nakalagay sa title na alam natin? CLOA, 10 years prohibition. Dati, homestead patent, yung may 5-year prohibition. Although, wala na yan siya. Uh, lahat ng patents ngayon, no more uh, five years prohibition to sell no from the time of issuance wala na yan siya done na yan only the clover remains tapos yung may mga restriction ng NHA tapos yung homeowners restrictions nakatatak doon at ito yung gusto ko i-discuss sa inyo na iba kasi nagtatanong eh, bakit daw hindi sila binayaran ng gobyerno for uh, compensation for the road widening ng lupa nila nakain ng lupa nila sabi ko anong title hawak mo let us see. Eh, pagtingin sa title, it's a patent wherein may inscription doon na the government can make and get this property back for use ng public purposes such as a right of way. So, in that case, um, uh, while it is a conclusive evidence of ownership, however, if there is an annotation of the title itself which says that it can be taken by the government, without paying you a certain amount. Kaya ang iba, binabayad lang yung naputol na trees, but not the land. So, yun po ang rule dyan. Alright? And finally, uh, as such, once the title is registered, the owner might rest secure uh, without the necessity of waiting in the portals of the court or sitting in the Merador de Su Casa. Uh, to avoid the possibility of losing his land. Parang pwede kang matulog na mahimbing ba? Huwag ka mag -alala. Rest assured, sa'yo yan. Titulado yan sa'yo. Huwag ka mag-worry-worry dyan. Once the title is registered under your name. Kaya nga, in-encourage natin yung mga may hawak pa ng mga properties na tagal-tagal na, alienable and disposable for quite a long time already, ba ipata, applyan nyo na ng title. Kaya nga, because of the indefeasibility of this uh title under the torrent system of land registration which we are uh, under right now the philippines all right so i will be continue discussing the other topics on the powers of the lra at saka yung registry of deeds next system next time uh, next uh, wednesday and from now uh, dito lang muna tayo para hindi masyado hindi masyado kung makalikot yung utak ninyo masyado. <laughs> Dito lang tayo. Tapos, I will continue with the discussion para step by step, no? Para ma-absorb po ninyo kaagad itong ating lectures po. And, Sir Bong, I am now 
ready to accept pa question. questions po. Tony, sino nanalo dito? Si Skilegarda tsaka sa Lucky. Si si ano, yata. Oh, si Legarda po nanalo dyan. Alam, parang alam din kay siya dito <laughs> sa amin eh. Ah, talaga? Yeah, et- etong mostly ng property ni Legarda. Ay. Andito po sa Malacanang at saka sa Recto. Kaya pala. Si- eh, yung pinakamalaking property nila between itong area ng Malacanang hanggang doon sa Recto ang mga property niya. At talaga? All over Recto, ang dami property nila Legarda. Guys, sila yeah. sa pinakamaraming kasi ano ito eh, tapni yung mga Sige po. mga ligarda. Mga Spanish people 'yan eh. Yes, oo. Di ba ang Malacañan ginawa yang vacation house ng governor. Di ano ng ating governor noon. Uh, Nasa sila yung una na bigyan ng mga property dito. And then okay. ginawa niya na yung mga property all over hanggang do sa Recto, hanggang sa Quiapo, yeah. Ligarda property po yun. Para kung parang dito sa Davao mga Villa Abril. Eh. Yes, so sila yan mga proyekto. Uh, ang dami yan, ang dami eh, attorney. Oh. Dami nilang natayuan ng squatter. Sa may ermita rin, sa may ermita rin yan sila, no? Oh, all over dito sa Manila. Mm. Oh, dami yan. Grabe. Sige, okay, sige. Mm. So, you have any question, ka attorney? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, any question. Go ahead. You Mm-mm. can ask your question. First, state your name and then ask a question. So, big sabihin na Tony, ano, yung bukod na sa Torin's title, meron talaga mga Spanish title. Meron. Diba? Diba yung mga una noon? Meron pa yung mga Spanish title, but it is no longer recognized now. Yes. Sir. It is no longer recognized now because... Uh, it's gone. Wala na talaga oh, yan. Tapos na eh. Diba? Tapos, tapos na. na tapos na yung, oh, prescribed na yung prescribed. yung ano na dapat i- ipaanan nyo. May, may bago ng batas, di ba? Yes. Yung... So yung mga nakiklaim ng 01-1. <laughs> oh, yan. 01-1. Sige nga. 01-1. Yung nakiklaim, baka mayroon mga sa inyo. <laughs> ano dyan ha? Yung nakakaano ng 01-1 or 01-2. Apat. Ano yan, Sir Bong? Mga talano pa. Uh, diba? Apat na title na <laughs> oh, ano? eh. Yung title sa Luzon, title sa Mindanao, Isaya, <laughs> and Palawan. Di ba, Tony? Tapa ba ako doon? <laughs> okay. Um, kasi, ang, yung nga, sabi ko, ang, ang dapat kasi, we were supposed to, ano, we were supposed to to inform uh and have it registered yung mga old titles natin which yeah. we that we which we did not do so that's uh, how it is no so yeah kaya kung merong nagpapakita ng spanish title eh, parang hirap na i-claim noon eh lalo na kung may new title na eh mm-hmm. yes sir ang ang may na ko ikwento sa inyo <clears throat> regarding this uh this uh which led to the to the removal of one judge here in Dabo City. There's a Spanish title in Dabo City. Di ko na lang i-mention yung estate na yun. Because I was, I was, nilapitan din kasi ako for two, I was a young lawyer then, and I studied it, and nainggan nyo ako, talaga may titulo. And the problem is that, meron ng ibang mga titulo doon sa lupa na yon wherein karamihan is meron ng SM sa Dabao yung mga ibang lugar sa Ecolan Hall of Ecolan kasi yon siya eh ng Dabao City so ang ginawa nitong nung, nung ibang mga nag ginawa nila nagpareconstitute sila on areas in that but si imagine kunyari buong buong north ng, o buong south of Dabo City is under that Spanish title. And let's say, i-relocate i- i- mo yan siya and look for those areas na nanatitle na ngayon doon sa doon sa yung, yung talagang nasa torrent system. So, merong mga areas doon na hindi talaga na kompleto na kuha. Yun ang pinare-constitute nila lahat. 
<laughs> Pina- using the Spanish title, Pina- yung mga wala na cover sa titulo ng under the torrent system, yun ang pinag-ano nila and they were able to have it registered. Ay, yun, oh, tapos uh, yeah, uh, but the problem was that uh, because of that, ayaw nung registry of deeds ni i, i- ano, i, i- annotate Yeah, hindi niya okay. i-transfer, hindi niya magpa-reconstitute, directing the reconstitution, hindi niya reconstitute. Baala ka dyan, sabi no, ng, ng judge is that ministerial yan, you have to do what I mean. Ay, hindi. Ba, tago siya sa kagayan. Hindi <laughs> ko like good. Saka ko na chisis ko sino yun. Tago siya sa kagayan. Ay, oh, ay, oh, tidy. Hindi, kasi may bench warrant. Ang bench warrant, yung, yung hindi ka makabail hanggang you perform it. Ah, tago siya sa ano. Hanggang na question sa Supreme Court, uh, which uh, na TRO, hindi na tuloy ang paghuli sa ROD, kay may TRO and everything, which eventually, nagkaroon na ng ibang-ibang mga sanga-sanga na issue, which eventually led to the removal of the judge no? from uh, service talaga. Natanggal talaga siya sa pagka-judge niya. Uh, ignorance of the law. Ignorance of law. Oh, kasi meron na kasing decided case on that eh, na particular on that property wherein uh, mm-hmm. I would like to discuss that by next meeting. Ipipresent ko yung case itself para government record ba? Hindi tayo ma, hindi tayo ma foul dito. Yes, no? tama uh, I'll be discussing that later on para maintindihan ninyo ano yung difference <laughs> ng Spanish and ano. So yun. Uh, anyway, uh, anybody would like to ask yeah, question? question? Mm. Journey. Ako po. Go ahead, Marilyn. Go ahead. Sige, uh, yung regarding sa ano po, regarding sa rights, pwede po bang apply yan lang title po, attorney? Ay, una, una, Marilyn, is that we have to understand if yung rights na sinasabi mo is that rights ng lupa because it is alienable or disposable or baka rights na hindi naman siya government property siya. Take note, di ba, under the Regalian Doctrine, all lands of the, in the Philippines, without private ownership, are owned by the uh, by state. The uh, by the state, okay. the government, yes, no? Po. Now, kung hindi na-declare ng, ng, ano, ng, hindi na-declare ng government na alienable and disposable ito, public land yan siya. So, kung dyan ka nakastay, tapos nabili mo yan doon sa nakastay dyan dati noon, nakaposesyon, it is just rights. So, in, mm. what it's transferred to you is only the rights to occupy. Hindi mo mapatituluhan mm. yan. So, bag, para mala, paano mo malaman po, Marilyn, kung, kung alienable or disposable yan? Punta kay sa DNR and ask for mm. a certification on whether this property, pagkita mo yung, kung may tax deck, yung location, at saka yung, yung address, and the government agency, yung DNR, will issue now a certification to you whether or not that property is alienable. Kung alienable, tapos in possession ka ng property, pwede nyo apply yan, either homestead mm-hmm. patent or residential pre-patent. Depende po. Uh, okay. in, in good faith naman siya. Kasi nabili niya, attorney, di ba? Hmm. Pag oh. ano, in good faith, kasi nabili niya, di ba? Pero, pag a problema, if kung public land siya, even if nabili niya, it will not uh, best any ownership sa kanya, but only the right to occupy right. it. Kaya nga, marami, Sir Bong ba, uh, boy bili ng mga rights dyan sa aming lugar. Meron kasi kami dito parang little bagyo sa may Buda. Meron nga, marami. <laughs> ano may, meron. Sino ba nakabili doon? Oh. May lung po, Sir. Mga ganyan. Eh, karamihan um, naman, una, pagmamayari ng tribal, mm-hmm. mga tribes ba, pagkatapos, binibenta nila. Tapos ikaw naman, di doob sale ka, tanggap ka. But actually, you are not allowed to do that because unless you are a member of the tribe, you cannot own that because it's owned by the tribe. However, recognizing that uh, marami talagang mga taga-tribo na siging uh, benta-benta, kaya pumasok yung ipralo natin. Sa ipralo natin, allowed ngayon sila to un, uh, to enter into an agreement with the person na kung say, nakakuha nung rights noon. But only parang to occupy, parang steward occupy. or parang lease ba for 25 yeah. years, renewable for another 25 years. 25. Hanggang yes. dyan ka lang ba yung When you have that, okay lang yan. Pero occupation lang sa'yo, tapos hindi mo pwede ibenta, 
Tabero, kailangan you're required to, to plant trees na mga paeng trees. O, oh, pagandahin mo. Hindi na bawiin his loan. Thank you po. Opo. Kung, kung bibiliin nyo na hindi kayo doon titira, useless po yun. Useless. Mm. Na pagbiliin nyo, na tirahan nyo, taniman nyo, mm. para hindi bawiin ang tribes. Mm -hmm. Or magpa-convert ka doon sa tribe. <laughs> Another <laughs> Uh, actually, yung kalum ngayon hindi na yan siya, uh, hindi na yan siya, wala na yan siya ngayon, no? Um, dati meron ito siya, di pa, hinaanapin ko yung, yung meaning nitong kalum nito. Meron ako dito sa computer ko. Hindi ko kasi masyado maintindi na turning. Certificate of alien. Uh, alien. Certificate of... <laughs> Uh, certificate of actual land occupancy okay, for actual. migrants. Okay. Um, meron yan siyang dati noon, but uh, right now, ang instead of kalum is that, although yung mga na-execute na kalum is, parang I think it's still uh, effective pa naman, pero ang kanila ngayon is yun nga, yung agreement na 25 years, yun ang bago eh. Yun ang pinafollow hmm. ngayon. Oo. So... Yeah, um, chik, yung kalum, as I learned, is parang hindi na yun siya applicable. Pero kung merong na-execute na kalum noon, uh, it's still applicable. E use pa rin yun siya. Pero may period of years lang. Yun ang meaning okay. Thank no. Thank you, Attorney. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Katerine, na palawan. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Attorney, good evening po. Yeah. Attorney, tanong ko lang po kung ano, is it possible po dun sa Ipralo kung um, kung ang isang alienable and disposable land ay pwedeng mapaloob pa doon sa Ipralo na parang kumbaga meron ng actual ano an occupant doon sa isang alienable and disposable disposable land actual claimant siya. Possible pa po ba yun na maging under ng parang Ipralo na parang i-claim ng mga tribes? Uh, actually um before the tribe can claim it no they will be given a Certificate of Ancestral Domain Title, yung CADTI. Mm. And isasurvey talaga ng government kung hanggang saan kanila. Mm -hmm. Kaya, um, kung madama yung occupy mo, na pwede mong i-object na hindi ito kasali. No? Pero, uh, sometimes, um, minsan nga, yung dating alienable and disposable nasasali sa CADTI. So, yun ang problem kasi pag o oh, pag pag mabigay niya yung kadti tapos yun ang kanyang boundaries tapos nadamay ka mm -hmm. doon uh, wala na kunin talaga nila kunin talaga nila kanila talaga yan mm -hmm. alam din nila yung batas eh. <laughs> <laughs> ah thank you po okay aware aware sila sir bong ay alam na magagaling no ay aware sila do you have any more questions kathorny go ahead Amelie, share your question. Uh, wala po. Uh, wala. Anyway, uh, I'm so happy with uh, sharing very informative attorney hats off. Yes. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Attorney, na, yung recording ko naputol. Mm. So, siguro, hingi kami ng kopya. Si Ma'am Milis nang hingi ng kopya. No problem. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, any more? Any more questions? Kung wala na, maybe we will... Ay, attorney, pahabol po. Okay, go ahead. Uh, for example, kung lumabas po yung CADT nila, uh, Certificate of Title ng mga tribes, pwede po bang i-annotate yun? For example, maghabol yung isang claimant, actual claimant, actual developer ng isang alienable and disposable mm -hmm. land. For example, 20 years na. Pwede bang, pero parang huli na lumabas na, for example, may title pala na yung yung, kanti, yung certificate of ancestral, mm -hmm. ano nila. Um, pwede po bang ipa-annotate yun dun sa title nila? Hindi na, po. 
Hindi po. Hindi, uh-huh. hindi eh. po. Hindi po talaga. Sorry talaga. <laughs> hindi talaga. Hmm. Talaga nga habulin nila eh. No? Habulin sa kanila yun. Hmm. Hindi. I-deny talaga yan. Ang mangyari na, bayaran mo na lang. <laughs> Pero ano rin? Rental din. Yes, so, oo. Rental, ang, rental. Ang, actually, ang kalakaran talaga nangyayari, Terbong, bentahan talagang nangyayari. Tapos, Mm-hmm. ay pinapalabas lang nila na para may 25 years agreement sila na magstay sa lugar. Mm-hmm. However, um, ang ginawari ko lang dyan later on, pag mag-abot na yung 25 years, tapos magre-renew ka, baka malaki mm-hmm. na naman ang hihingin ba? Yan, problema. Mm-hmm. Yan ang Hindi, malaking saka, problema. Iba na kausap nyo, no? Yes, iba na kausap. Ibang dato na, na naman. Na yun, hindi na yung hindi yes, na yung leader na dati. Yes. yes, ibang dato na naman. Ibang dato Mangyari na naman. naman. Ay, mm-hmm. hindi na. Yan. So, it, kung ang edad mo ngayon is 60 years old, tapos <laughs> 25, 85, 85 pwede na. Wala na. <laughs> <laughs> Pero kung hindi kasi, kung hindi, kung, kung, kung kukunti lang magiging income, talo ka. Hmm. Dapat mapa-income mo siya ng malaki hmm. within 25 years. 25 years. Yes. Kaya nga, yung iba, Sir Bong, ginagawa nilang, <laughs> hindi, hindi, hindi lane. Ang ginagawa nila yeah. per lane is, ginagawa nila na parang resort. Resort. Na, o, oh, oh, parke mm-hmm. lang kasi malamig ang lugar, may lagyan lang ng, mm-hmm. lalo na yung may mga spring. Yung sa inyo, per lane, uh-huh. merong, Yes, sir. O, oh, may spring. O, oh, may spring doon. Doon, yeah. malamig. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, so, Sir Bong, Sino may ganun? Pain kami mm-hmm. nyo na nagpain kami na marami. The actually, Sir Bong, sabi sa akin ni Ferlane is that pag dumating daw kayong December, eh, punta daw tayo sa lugar nila. Ah, uh, sige. Wala na maglakad tayo. Oo, maligo tayo sa spring. Malamig doon. Malamig talaga. Ay, nako, ma- makita ninyo itong lugar namin dito, guys, yung hindi taga Davao City. You try to... Kahit 12 o'clock, ang lamig. Maganda ang lugar po talaga. Ang sarap, mm. sarap, ang sarap. Uh, Eh, mag- maganda sa Dabang. Ako, na-inlove ako sa Dabang nung I first nagpunta ako dyan. May waman yata yung na-inloveban mo, Sir Bong? Nagahanap pa. Ah, nagahanap. Any other questions, no? Ay, tanong pa kayo dyan. No more questions? Elmar, you have questions? Alam mo, meron ako ano ba, kwento sa inyo about this. Na-fascinate ako nito kay uh, Richard Robert Torrance ba? Kasi, yes, uh, imagine sir, I was able to make the device and now he has created a name for himself hanggang ngayon. Yes, sir. Imagine that. Imagine, imagine you created a legacy ba na carry Torrance mm-hmm. system of... Uh, my system. God, no? Immoral na siya. Ano, mm. ah, ano, ano Forever. Actually, nakatatak uh, na. Actually, nag-ano nag-ano talaga ako. Inaantay ko lang yung uh, meron na akong inaantay yung Escobedo system sana ba. Kuma <laughs> kuma kuma, kuma ipasa na yon ba. Para naman may ma, may ba alala naman tayo, Escobedo system. Oh. Yeah, ah, no, exciting. Ay naantay ko yun. Yung mga names yun na hindi na natatanggap. Hindi na natatanggap. No, yung ano yun eh, yung uh, immoral, yung ano ka na doon. Uh, ano tawag doon na Tony? Um, De Gasina, hindi, parang uh, immortal, uh, immortal, uh, immortal. Uh, immortal. Uh, immortal. Immortal ka na. Uh, immortal. Palagi nang nakikita. Yeah. Meron na akong isang example. Uh, Tony, no? di ba yung double board? Yung double board na tinayo yung building. Yes po. Di ba nandyan? Yes sir. Di ba ipinakabit ni ni ano ni past president ng Davao yung 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 plaque ano tawag yes, sir. yung Yes sir. Yes uh, po. Uh, nandoon yung pangalan ko. O nga. O nga. O nga. Di ba? Immortal na. Ako. Immortal Ay, yun. Ako. Yan na, yan na. Lecture That's the... Armando Escobedo. Correct. Forever na yun doon. Correct. Favorite ko mga Favorite lecturer. Di ba? Oh, okay. Favorite lecturer namin to si Sir Bong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nababago na yung boses ko. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Wala na? So, very clear, no? Yung kaya, Tony, uh, at least nalaman natin yung history mm-hmm. na mayroong 